Back in the 1850s, pioneer publisher James Hutchings was extolling Yosemite's scenery in his California magazine, but readers regarded his illustrations as exaggerated or embellished. So Hutchings brought early Sacramento photographer Charles Weed to Yosemite to photograph its wonders. Although crude by today's standards, Weed's photographs helped validate that grand scene in ways that few could anticipate. In some ways, Weed set off a photographic revolution that forever changed the way people engage landscape photography. As the grandeur of Yosemite became known, an army of artists and authors soon followed Hutchings' lead. While the names of many early photographers have faded, several gained a Yosemite identity, including Carlton Watkins, George Fisk, Julius Boyson, Edward Muybridge, A.C. Pillsbury, Joseph LeConte, and Ralph Anderson. The early Yosemite photographers were a heroic bunch of entrepreneurs, hefting their huge cameras, heavy tripods, glass plates, and even their portable dark rooms over mountains and meadows. Watkins, for instance, was known to use a wheelbarrow to move his heavy equipment around Yosemite. Jim Snyder, the retired parks historian, points out that photography was a driving force in the Yosemite preservation movement and in the 1916 creation of the National Park Service. In the 1920s, a young Ansel Adams came along and soon eclipsed the other trailblazing photographers. Adams eventually emerged as the premier landscape photographer in the nation and a photographic crusader for national parks and wilderness areas. The arrival of photographic postcards and the roll film camera became big game changers. The popular box camera sounded the death knell for large cameras and their fragile glass plates. The postcard and snapshots of the park went global. By the 1920s, almost every American had seen photographic proof of Yosemite's commanding beauty. Tammy Lau of the Henry Madden Library at California State University, Fresno, said that postcards and their precursors, stereographs, were popular in the late 1800s and early 1900s because they brought the wonders of the world to the general public. In the days before travel was common and relatively easy and inexpensive, most people had no way of seeing places like Yosemite in person, Lau said. They had to content themselves with being armchair travelers, living vicariously through the descriptions and photographs of those who had seen it. Today, almost every park visitor carries a digital camera or smartphone. Photography has become the communications art of the century, and for many amateurs and professionals alike, a reason to visit Yosemite. And most likely, old James Hutchings and Charlie Weed are rolling around in their graves with big photographic smiles, knowing that they started something special. <laughs>